how do I even go? The rest of the list is, I mean, the list is like superstar after superstar after superstar. Like, why do I, I mean, I, I can't, all right, so this next guy, let's see, the first time, the first time I met Casey was, I believe it was Petersville, and Logan grabs me and says, we're going to go to this jumping show, and there's going to be a bunch of jumping hot rods, and I'm like, okay, hot rods and gas, okay, yeah, crazy shit, the beer, okay, let's do it. <laughs> And we show up, and there's this dude, and he's in this, like, tent, and he's got this insane, like, RD350, but it, it's, like, Kawasaki green, it's got this custom bronze frame, and this huge front wheel, and it's this crazy, like, custom build, the paint's insane, the build's insane, and there stands Casey, and I finally get to meet Casey, and, like, he had built, like, like countless bikes, there were a couple of, there was a kick-down bike in there, and it was just, like, like cocoa and cream sort of thing that he did. I mean, he's a crazy, insane builder, designer, painter. And we're standing at Petersville, and he's got this bike. And he's got this little dog, looks like Falcor from, from the movie. So, I, you know, I've known Casey for, for a number of years now, and like he just. Oh, you're turning up on me because I keep dropping the microphone? <laughs> You are in control of this. Eat the mic. I don't like to eat the mic. I don't like to eat the mic. See? Uh, Alright, so. But I think, I don't know, my, my first, my, like my, my first adventure to handbill um, in Austin, Texas involves Casey because we were meeting Casey. He was dropping off bikes or something you were painting or dropping off or... You were being a badass at Austin. That's all I know. It was the handball show. Because you get invited to the handball show, you, you get like this like bronze invitation, like the, you know, all the seas part and everybody shows up. And the reason I remember this is because I spent like 18 hours in the back of like some, the, the Rally Rolla, 18 hours straight from Louisville. Uh, Logan calls me and says, we're, we're meeting Casey in, in Austin, Texas. And it's 18 hours in the back of a car. And we just, we hauled ass to Austin, Texas. Bam, we get there. And Casey's van opens, and there are like, there's a couple of bikes, just, you know, of course, another like sick custom builds because I'm like, he's a superstar. He ultimately like goes on to like win, didn't he win the R9T at Austin that year? Like, weren't they giving away like a, a custom? Yeah, they were giving away an R9T for you, or R9T for you to customize. So he wins that. And. And then we went to Torchy's Tacos. Like, I remember the food and the motorcycles, you know? Like, we were like, Casey's like, oh, they're gonna do a thing. And I'm just like, let's go, let's Torchy's Tacos that way. Um, and, then, and then recently, um, the, um, the podcast actually was, was gracious enough and, and awarded some time with Kevin Schwanz at Mid-Ohio this year, which is awesome. But Casey was also commissioned to build um, like a commemorative bike for Kevin Schwans in the Pepsi, it was a Pepsi stream, right? It was the whole, like, so it was amazing. But this guy is an absolute crazy, insane builder, painter, fabricator. Casey Elkins, everybody. I'm embarrassing, yeah. Yeah, so I don't know what to say after all that. I'm glad they Did you take your story? Ramp this up a hair a bit. So now the volume's up to everybody I might have, might have done a little thing there, sorry. Yeah, yeah. So uh, I don't really feel like I need to explain anything else about myself after Bob. Was very <laughs> uh, I don't even really understand why I accepted or said I would do this. Because I don't want to talk in front of people. Same. Yeah, I'm very, very embarrassed and everybody's looking at me. <laughs> you, you want me to hold your hand? I can hold your hand. This would be better as a Q&A. Yeah, I definitely do. Right. So I'll, uh, my story is actually about the first time I traveled internationally in a very big way. Uh, and became an unintentional uh, ambassador for our country. <laughs> so, it kind of started, there's a show in uh, Cleveland called uh, Fuel Cleveland. Awesome show put on by some good friends of mine. Uh, and there's a company, at the time, they were called, um, that doesn't matter. Now they're called Motorcycle Sherpa. So, and they were giving a trip away to ride to Nepal. Uh, kind of last minute thing, I signed up for it literally the morning of the event, 
show up to the event and I get a text message uh, asking for you know some more information, I'll send them my information. I'm thinking it's a buddy of mine who actually got me to sign up to it. So when they called me, I thought it was a complete joke and started like bullshitting with these people like, nah, I, I'm not falling for this. I know who you are. <laughs> not, like, listen, man, sure, sure, all, you know, just whatever. And then the guy was like, no, just meet me. I promise you. I was like, oh yeah, I'll meet you, fine. Whatever. Show up and it is the guy who runs the company who is taking me to Nepal. So I kind of felt like I'm kind of an ass after that. Basically cussed the dude out for joking with me. So <laughs> not a great first impression. Anyway, come around to the actual trip. And I don't know if any of you guys have traveled in any of the, that part of the country. You know, like China, down Nepal, India, any of that stuff. It's, it's incredible. It is a, you get to ride through a postcard, basically. Like, it's everything you can imagine. And the first day of this trip, um, I don't know if you've seen the pictures of people riding where it's like six people on a moped carrying a bundle of like a bar <laughs> or a refrigerator on their back. Like, all those things are legitimately true. I mean, it's unreal to see. Uh, you've never seen talent on a motorcycle like the people in these countries. I mean, they, it, it's incredible. And it looks like a colony of ants everywhere. There's no lights, there's nothing. I mean, it is the most intimidating riding you will ever see. So, you know, start off the trip, first day, it's, it's intimidating, but it's awesome. You get to see some of the most beautiful things. We, we're in Kathmandu, Nepal, driving through these places. It's like you're shoulder to shoulder with other motorcycle riders, so you're, you can't do anything but follow traffic. You're just flowing. People are bumping into you. You have no idea what's going on because they're you're just trying to follow your crew. And we get through all that, and it's the first night camping. You're in this mountain. Your view is the sunrise coming over the Himalayas. It's incredible. It's picturesque. Second day, they're like, okay, today's kind of going to suck. But you got to understand, our, our ride is, I forget, I don't even know how many miles it was. It was a good ride on rolling field Himalayas. That's what we're on. Yes! <laughs> First day was on the bullets and they were not fun. No. <laughs> but yeah, we're on brand new bikes, we're riding through this, I don't know, it's like city to city, but it's all kind of what you would consider here highway or interstate almost. And it is their version of semi trucks, tuk tuks, called. And they have, right when we were there, it was right after their rice harvest. So you have these trucks that have, I guess, rice stalks and they're like hanging over the edge of the truck. So, one time I almost got killed by riding through two of them going the opposite direction. And I have a picture somewhere of me getting scraped by the rice stalks across both sides as I'm splitting this lane. Because it's kind of like California, you split lanes, you, you pass on the wrong side, you're already on the wrong side of the road, everything. And it's the most, I, I, I thought I was gonna die all day. And you, the group starts separating, so you're miles apart. You're, I mean, there's only 10 people riding there. Everybody is from other parts of the country or world, not country. Um, but it, it's very intense. The whole day, you're just, it, it's terrifying. But you're also, at the same time, looking over your side. Oh, there's the Himalayas. This is beautiful. I'm about to die. Like, it's, it's your whole time. So we ride into this um, park called uh, Chitawa. If any of you guys are from... Nepal, correct me on the name of this country. <laughs> um, but it's like, it is the biggest national park in all of Nepal. And like, you're, the options to go there, you can ride an elephant, you can see wild tigers in the woods, crocodiles, all this insane stuff. So I'm excited to get there, but at the end of this day, I look like a coal miner. I've been riding on these roads. My, everything about me is as nasty as you can imagine. I hit mud puddles on the beginning of the trail. A wrecked that day. Uh, I think everybody wrecked that day at some point in some way or another. So we get to this park. <laughs> and, uh, you know, like me and a buddy of mine who had actually came with me, he's from Berea, Kentucky. Uh, we're in the very back of the pack just chilling. We get down, we're pulling into this park. We, there's like kind of like huts that you stay in. And the big draw for this place is there's an actual bar here. You can get bourbon at this place. <laughs> I've been drinking, got off the beer, did like 
because we got there a few days early, so it's very light beer that it's like two percent, four percent at the max. But this place had Jack Daniels, supposedly in a bullet, they did not. Uh, but anyway, so I'm so excited. Let's get to this bar in this park and relax and pull in, spend extra time getting the bags off, dress out, start walking into the park. Uh, the whole rest of the group is gone. And this is a big park, I don't have a clue where they've gone to. So they apparently went down the trail, down the trail, down the trail. We get out, me and my buddy Nick, and we're walking through and there's this group of people. And they look like, kind of like hotel concierge people. They're kind of dressed decent, look nice. You know, it's like, oh, this must be the people that are gonna tell me where my room's at, where the bar's at, no big deal. Walk up to this lady, nice gentleman, dressed nice. Hey, you guys, uh, where the bar's at? You know, you know, like we're we're here looking, you know, just love a beer. I'm exhausted. And they look at me like I'm the biggest idiot you've ever seen in your life. Like just like dumbfounded. And I'm thinking, they don't speak English. Sure, of course they don't speak English. <laughs> Maybe you guys know someone who speaks English. And you, you know, still just like look at me. And I mean, a little bit of hatred, kind of coming across from them. I'm like. <laughs> I'm sorry, like, and there's a group of guys, big dudes, and I believe people are very small. I mean, if they're five foot, they're like a tall person in Nepal. So I'm like, well, these guys are not, they're, they're a little bit taller. And they're standing in this line behind these people, and I'm like, man, their hotel security here is legit. <laughs> these people are something else. So my buddy, I was like, we can probably just find it. Let's just walk on. And then they're like, all these guys walk up behind, and they start moving in front of the people. And my buddy Nick was like, hey, I actually see him. Let's just go over to the bar. I was like, okay, thanks, guys. Sorry. Third intrude. We'll go over that way. Walk over to the bar, and our group leader, a guy named Bodhi, uh, he's like, oh, my God, you guys see, like, how exciting is it to be in this park this weekend? Yeah, it's awesome. This place is amazing. It's beautiful. He's like, the president of Nepal is here right now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not kidding, that's awesome. Like, <laughs> like, where are they at? So, like, you know, we grab our drinks because we don't know who we met. Like, we're grabbing our drinks and finally get this Jack Daniels. Watered down Jack Daniels, by the way. And they, uh, so we're sitting there at this bar, had like three in me, and then across from us, where we're sitting at the bar, is this like gazebo type of thing. And they had cameras and stuff set up, and that's where they're doing the interview with the president and the vice president. And they walk into it, and Bodhi bumps me, and says, that's the president right there. And I was like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> now I feel real dumb. <laughs> Just ask the president of this country where I can get a drink. 